Okay, guys. Oh, I'm back. Hi everyone, I'm so happy to be back. I have been gone for a while and I keep going on and off on this channel. I have been trying to get back on doing my podcast. That's something that's really important to me and I wanted to get back to it. I created this podcast a year ago, but I, I'm French. You can probably hear by my accent, but um, I, I started making podcast episodes in French last year. And honestly, I loved it. I loved the whole process. Super this glass of iced coffee should not be there <laughs> let's put it what like i'm guessing we're gonna put it right there <laughs> i don't know how that looks i don't know what i'm doing but anyways i'm gonna put it there so yeah i i want this podcast to be about something very chill it's like an, a cup of coffee with me you sit down we talk about a topic i have been lately going through those changes as a young adult and honestly it's been tough i've been really trying to change my perspective on things and i've been paying more attention to my mentality and i'm not gonna say issues but my patterns and i thought that it was very interesting to share that with people because i think that a lot of people struggle with that anyways so if you don't know me my name is mag magali i don't know yet what what the name of this podcast will be because as i said i started my this podcast um in french so the name is in french um so i need to find a catchy name in english so if you want to help with that feel free this will be available on youtube like this this format i love working with video so i really like to support the podcast audio with a video but this will also be available in just audio. Anyways, let me take a sip of that first because otherwise I'm never going to drink it. Oh, let me put... I really want to put my candle. Anyways, so this podcast episode will be about healing fear of abandonment. I don't know exactly where I'm going with this. I have some stuff written down. But as I said, I love talking about those things. I'm one of those people. All my friends know that when I send an audio, it can never be short. I can never send an audio that is less than like uh, 40 seconds a minute. And for some people, it's like, Jesus Christ, dude, you're literally just sending me an audio saying that um, you're coming to my house in a few minutes and you're literally talking for like a minute and a half. I just love it. I enjoy talking. I enjoy making those audios. I enjoy listening to them too. So that's why I've always kind of felt pulled to this thing, kind of like if it was like my purpose or like what I really wanted to do because I really enjoy this. I enjoy sharing with people, hearing people's perspectives, discussing that. And also I'm still struggling. Let me, let me tell you something. I'm not, but I'm not making this podcast episode. Like I fixed everything in my life. I have no more issues and now I can teach you. I'm really not making a podcast for that reason. I went through a lot of self-reflection and I've come to a point where I feel like I can share those little tips and my self-reflection on things and if it can help someone, just one person out there, then I'll be more than happy and this will already be a success for me. Sometimes I just sit in my room, I cook, I put a video of people that I love hearing and reflecting on life and it's giving me a lot of inspiration, it's giving, giving me a lot of tips, a lot of self-reflection ideas. I'm doing it to help out and I'm doing it to have this exchange with people. Anyways, so I've been struggling in relationships in my life with like obviously past traumas and everything like that and i'm gonna try to be as clear as i can to give my perspective on fear of abandonment the first thing i think that i would try to think about be very careful with who you're dating who you're surrounding yourself with don't date avoidant partners by avoidant partners i'm trying to say that avoidant partners are basically people that are like not really confronting that are not going to be showing up for either you or themselves 
and they're kind of like they're kind of absent all that they feel like they never really want to face things with you these are the kind of people that i was going for because i was trying to prove myself and to like keep on doing this cycle and this repetitive patterns i was trying to get people's approval and when you're dating avoidant you're gonna get addicted to that dynamic so i would just say yeah like be careful and like try to pay attention to the people that you're surrounding yourself with the other really important thing that i would mention is and that's something that i'm still working on is to really try to create a self-supported system things that make you happy things that are your passions that you like doing i was putting so much pressure and i was expecting things to make me happy but the wrong things if that makes any sense if you put your happiness on let's say your relationship or maybe your a friendship obviously like these are people that you can count on and that you love and these should be also sustainable but they shouldn't be the primer the primary things and the primary factors that make you happy because relationships and friendships go to shit family it goes like this you're dealing with people as long as you're dealing with a human being that human being can have a bad day that human being can go through things they have their own things going on so don't put all of your happiness and like don't expect those things and those people to make you happy i'm talking about your self-worth your self-happiness try to create a system of things that you know will not move no matter what they will always be there and you can always count on those things to have this um, contentment and this consistency with yourself if for example you think in the way and that's how i used to think but oh my god if he leaves me then blah 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 then that means that if they leave you you're losing a reason to be happy and that's okay but i'm not talking about like oh yeah if they leave you be totally fine but i don't think that they should have that big of an impact on your self-love the third thing that i would mention would be to have a very strong and to build a very strong self 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 trust self trust i work on it every day and i'm totally super aware of it but for so many years i wasn't even aware of it first of all that would be a great thing if you would be aware of your own self i mean your own traumas and what happened in your life to be conscious of those events uh people that have hurt you situations that made you uncomfortable that hurt you deeply and it's just like about like letting go of those things from the past because not everyone is the same not all people are gonna leave you not all people are gonna treat you bad people are different the people that you meet in life if you have this fear unconsciously you're manifesting something and you're already getting your brain ready to a possibility that hasn't even happened i always catch myself like imagining like the worst case scenario thinking of the worst to happen to protect myself but then it's like i think that i'm protecting myself but then at the end of the day i'm really not protecting myself i'm really just putting my energy in the wrong place you need to have it very clear that others actions are on them and not on you it's really not about you don't take things personally don't take it that far show up for yourself be there for yourself if you're not even there for yourself who will be there's no way you can be there for other people and and have a, a an amazing time and have healthy consistent and valuable relationships um, with people if you're not even there for yourself the first thing would be consistency try to trust yourself trusting yourself is not just being like oh i believe in myself trusting yourself and building self-trust is about knowing that no matter what you will be there for yourself but your brain and yourself your unconscious your subconscious needs to have it very clear that you're consistent it's literally a habit it's learning something new it's creating a new habit in your life I promise you that this will make a difference in your life and I've always been one of those people super skeptical about the whole journaling thing and I was like oh my god journaling like why you know why why would I just write things down and then 
I started doing it and I'm still doing it, but I've never been consistent about it. That's the main thing. Once you start being disciplined and consistent, there's some kind of weird energy that's coming out of yourself. Kind of like you feel strong about this. You know that no matter what, you have a meeting with yourself every day. This is the time that you get to hear yourself, hear your thoughts, even if it seems very unnecessary and uh, kind of use useless by being consistent with yourself and building this routine it could be with phys physical movement it could be just writing it could be meditation it could be anything that is about you and that makes you kind of go deeper you're teaching your brain and you're teaching yourself and you're getting used to the fact that no matter what even if you're alone even if he leaves you even if they leave you even if she leaves you You'll have yourself anyways. Sorry, there's a truck. Huge truck on that little road. How? That's so typical of Costa Rica, I swear to God. But those are quick ways, consistency, discipline, routine, self-check, daily basis of ch self-checking, enjoying time alone. And for me, it goes to fear of abandonment. That's how I was at least. Focused on what if they leave me? What will I do if they leave me? Also, stop and get out of the victimhood that we tend to be in i used to be one of this one of those people that is always like yeah but this is happening to me why are you doing this to me but i can't do it because no one can understand me and i've seen this in so many people i've seen this in past partners friends myself family anyone honestly we have this tendency of going into the victimhood like this is happening to me every time I've, ha I've, I've tried to have a conversation with someone that's in the victimhood they have a hard time understanding that they have the control you can't just expect someone to make you happy and to save you so many people will be like yeah but you know like i was so a fucked up person with like issues and traumas and stuff and then i met this person and my life was fixed and honestly, if you're one of those people, that's great for you. But then when you think about it, it's like, have you really fixed those problems? Or are you just hiding by being with someone that fills this emptiness in you that you can't fill yourself? So I think that getting out of this victimhood and, and being aware that you have the control of changing your perspective, your mentality, learning new ways, learning new habits, changing your, your patterns. No one else will do it for you. So the victimhood, yes, you went through things, yes, you went through shit, yes, you went through traumas, and we're all super sorry for that, but then it's like, then what? Are you gonna spend your whole life being like, I went through this, and it's been, you know, like, you're stuck in the past, you're letting the past have too much power on you. Gain your power back, have your power back, you're living in the present. Be inspired by the future, learn from your past, but be there with the present. Another thing about fear of abandonment and how you can try to like heal from that, I kind of said that before, but it's really to find ways to meet your own needs. I, so many times in my life, when I was in a relationship, again, it's always a relationship um, connected to a relationship, but for me, when I'm in a relationship, that's when all of my toxic traits and patterns come out. Find ways to meet your own needs. I was always like focusing on like what the person didn't give me, what the person wasn't giving me, what other people weren't giving me, what people were doing wrong. When I put too much pressure on what others are not doing for me, that's when I try to stop, take a step back and think about what I haven't been doing for myself. What is it that I need that I'm not giving to myself? Constantly being unsatisfied, let down, disappointed, and you're constantly having this speech of like, oh my god, he didn't do this, she didn't do that, why did he do this? And it's like, okay, maybe I should focus more on what I need to give myself. That way I don't feel dependent. Um, on other people and their actions and what they're, they're not doing because the truth is as I said before as much as someone can love you be in love with you the boyfriend girlfriend brother mother dad they can have a bad day they can have a shitty day they can go through things you know like they have their own things going on you, you can't always expect someone to be 100% with you on you because that person is struggling with the, with not the same things but they're struggling with their own traumas their own issues and everyone will sometimes not be available for you and you need to be okay with that you need to have everything in you that goes okay this person is not going to give me that this person isn't available 
that's all good. It's not even, it doesn't even come through my mind like, oh my God, they're not there. I used to be one of those people like very frustrated um, whenever my boyfriend wouldn't be there for me, whenever they would like let me down. I would always find myself in situations of like waiting for him, waiting for a message, waiting for a call, waiting for him to come, waiting for a sign, constantly waiting. And then I was like, why? Why is it that I always find myself waiting? I put myself in those situations. I used to choose the people bad because I would choose people, as I said, I come back to the beginning of the video of the, that episode when I'm saying don't date avoidant partners. I was dating people that were just unavailable for me and for anyone, to be honest with you. But then even the healthiest people, the healthiest partner, boyfriend, girlfriend that you'll have, they are not there to heal you. They're not there to fix you. Pay attention to what you want, to what you are interested in, a sport, a passion, your job, a connection to nature, anything, traveling. You have this thing, we all have it in us, that our passion and what's important for us, what vibrates in us, will be reflected and if we look deeper, if we have that self-check, you'll realize that you're constantly pulled back to what you're meant to do, to be, to accomplish. Those are the need that you need to give yourself and that nobody will give you. No one will give you your self-trust. The only self-trust you'll get is from yourself. The other aspect of this would be to stop letting yourself down. The first person that's letting yourself down is you. The first reaction I would have when people would tell me this would be like, no, not at all, actually. Like, people have let me down. I've been with shitty people and it's their fault because now I'm all fucked up. Now it's like, okay, maybe I have let myself down. I realized that in some relationships, most relationships, and then I thought, okay, all of my relationships were like this. <laughs> I would stop doing things for myself. I would make myself too available. I would make myself there all the time 24 7 for that person but then also i can't blame the person because none of my boy my ex-boyfriends were telling me you can't go work out you can't go do this you can't go and meet people i for some reason chose to let myself down and to be like no i have to be there i was expecting them to at some point leave me be scared of being left so that every minute every second with that person was so precious that i would like always be there i was so scared of every minute to be the last one i was like no i'm just being with the person and when i'm with him i can do my things no when you stop doing your life on your on your on your side you can't have a healthy relationship if you don't even do your self work and your if you don't have your inner and personal space honestly let me tell you something a lot of people would be like yeah but dude i've been doing this for years and I've been with the person for 15 years. I've been married for four years. That's my opinion again. A relationship that is last lasting in the long term, it doesn't mean that it's a healthy relationship. And that took me a while to understand, even if it sounds so dumb and so logical, like duh. The fact that they're still together or still in a relationship for years doesn't mean that they're being healthy, that they're happy. I think that happy relationships are more like, okay, people growing from each other, learning from each other, growing together i think that we're like expecting too much from a relationship expecting find the one and be the be the one for someone you just stop building you just you're just with the person and you don't even think of okay i need to grow think about that and be like okay like how can i expect to grow if i'm not doing the work for it i then started forcing myself in relationships or even when i'm single but obviously when i'm single i love my alone time i'm like i'm the healthiest person ever when i'm single i'm like no all good in my life i love my alone time and then boom i get in relationship and i completely forget about all of my needs and like what i need to do to keep on growing i wanted to give out some examples just so that if you're wondering like oh i do i have a fear of abandonment like what is it I think that if you clicked on that video, you kind of have an idea, but I wanted to give examples of like possible signs that you might go deeper in this and try to like inform or maybe talk about it with a professional or like journal about it and reflect on that. But if you constantly feel like you're not enough, you're not giving enough or that you're not enough for someone, it's because you're not giving yourself that self-trust. 
or you're just not with the right person also if you keep doubting the relationship for me that's a big one i kept hiding behind this excuse like yeah but if i'm like this is because people have let me down people have betrayed me people have left me people have broken my heart they cheated on me they manipulated me blah 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 and it's valid it is valid it's just that i was living through those things i wasn't moving forward i was just carrying and taking with me all of the traumas like taking all the suitcase instead of opening the suitcase getting all the shit out making it lighter putting all the clothes that i don't want all the things that i don't have to bring on this trip i don't bring them i leave them i close the suitcase and i keep on moving forward in life oh my god that's a really good metaphor really proud of myself for that you know like i kept doing this to myself and to the relationship i kept going like yeah but it's not my fault people have din din and then what i was doing is constantly doubting every time the person wanted to have some space some time alone wanted to go for drinks with their friends wanted to do this or that and not anything that didn't include me i was like oh my god he wants to leave me oh my god he wants to take some space from me he doesn't like me anymore he, he's planning on breaking up with me he's reflecting on whether he wants to be with me or not i was like anticipating the worst case scenarios doubting the relationship if you trust yourself if you trust the bond and the connection you have with someone then you should just go with it whatever happens will happen trust that the person is a good person and that person loves you for who you are the person that you're with when they feel like you don't trust the bond that's when they are gonna be like that person clearly doesn't trust what we have and if they don't trust what we have why would we build something strong how can we build something strong from there if the person that I'm with doesn't even trust that unique bond and connection that we think we have, you know? Also, another sign of possible, like, you being scared of abandonment, if you're abandonment, would be to be kind of attracted hard to get people, addicted to the chase. I just watched this um, conference of the Diary of a CEO. I'll put it in the description if you want to listen to it. It's the one with Joe Dispenza, super interesting. But at some point he talks about like being addicted to sugar. And, and then he said something very true. He's like, you're not addicted to the sugar. You're addicted to the guilt that comes right after eating that sugar. It's a, it's a big one for me too. Because I was like, okay, why do I keep going for, the, for those people? And then I was like, I'm attracted to unhealthy people. I'm attracted to toxic people because I've had toxic people in my life. And it's like, no, you're attracted to the suffering you're attracted to the chase you're attracted to proving yourself and proving that you deserve to have a place in those people's lives i mean not attracted but you're addicted you're addicted to that chase you're addicted to this constant suffering and and vicious circle because for you that's maybe how you learned that was love maybe that's how you developed this thing in your mind as a kid or a teenager that that's what love should be i'm supposed to be hard to love i'm supposed to have a hard time getting those people in my life and and and, and maybe i should prove that i deserve a spot in your life another sign would be feeling insecure and anxious in relationships for me that was also like a big one <laughs> i feel like i say this with every single one but I was constantly with this ball of anxiety in my stomach, felt very insecure, I felt unsafe. And I think that it's also about building this self-trust that you have your own self and safe zone. Another one that's very, very related to what I just said is becoming anxious and kind of like obsessed when the person, your lover, your partner leaves, when, the, when your partner is apart from you you're kind of becoming obsessed with that you can't think of anything else you're anxious and i've had that and i've seen this with other and past partners too and friends um with their own relationships that they get this thing of like when the person is apart from them they kind of lose control because they don't know how to think of themselves and to go deeper and to focus on themselves and really do that self-check and focus on what they want because they might not even know what they want what they like to do you know that's for me that was very true years ago i wasn't even aware of what i wanted to do what i loved doing what was important to me i lost all of those things and that's why i think it's always very good to know how to be alone and have no issue with that not 
to be like oh you're leaving oh so i'm gonna do this now no you're leaving okay great i'm gonna do my thing but don't make yourself available when the person is like i'm free now and now you're like okay because then it's just like you're you're just adapting to his or her unavailability if that makes any sense you know and the last one would be to playing worst case scenarios in your head that's something that i used to do a lot and that i'm still doing a little bit but it's something that i'm working on so but just know that it's it's you can take care of it you can take control of your life you can take your power back you just have to really count on yourself and really trust that it's you with yourself stop focusing on who's gonna love me who's gonna when am i gonna find the right one and just try to like find yourself find your own passions find ways and understand why someone would love you so many years i was like always like I don't understand why this person, why this guy really likes me, I don't get it. And trust me, when you have this kind of mentality, the person in front of you feels it. You project this energy around you that you don't even understand why people like you. Why does he like me so much? Why are you in love with me? Why do you want to be with me? Anyways, I hope that this episode helped you and there was a lot of rambling. And if you got at least one little thing or if you related to anything that I've said, feel free to share your thoughts i'm very excited to hear feedbacks please take the time to subscribe if you feel like sharing your story your opinion on that your experience i would love to read you and maybe it's going to help someone also scrolling through the comments um, thank you so much for taking the time to listen have a great day beautiful day take care of yourself um, spend some time alone don't forget to hear your thoughts and don't forget to love yourself. And I didn't even drink my iced coffee. That's when I know that I should stop talking. Have a great day.